Hey everyone, Micah here with Electrek. I'm joined by Fred Lambert and Seth Weintraub was back there pedaling. And we're here in Friedrichshafen, Germany, where we are visiting Eurobike 2021 to see all the latest developments in the electric bicycle industry. Join us and we'll take you around the show to see the coolest features. Eurobike 2021 returned after going on hiatus last year during the pandemic. It wasn't as large of a show this year because of that, but there were still tons of presenters with all sorts of interesting and awesome new products, technologies, and plain old weird bikes. An early favorite of mine, and one of the first things I tested out at the show, was the new free drive e-bike system from Heinzmann and Schaeffler. It's a ride-by-wire system that powers an e-bike without the need for a chain or a belt. You just spin a generator at the pedals, and that electricity powers the motor and charges the battery. They had it installed in this massive cargo e-bike, which is one of the best applications for this technology, since it allows new designs for bikes that aren't tied to a bicycle chain run anymore. Speaking of new designs and tech, Revolt is another great example of a company thinking outside the e-bike box. Not only do they have beautiful designs for e-bikes, including some really nice Catalonian leatherwork and brass accents, but they developed their own software for their e-bikes, which allows them to program cool features like their new Regen Fit. When you pedal backwards on the pedals, Regen Fit engages regenerative braking proportionally to however hard you pedal. You can also put the bike on a trainer and use it like a fitness bike for training, with the motor using regenerative braking to charge the battery and giving you a workout at the same time. We took some of the bikes for a spin to test them out, and the backwards pedaling regen was a pretty awesome feature. It's basically like one pedal driving for an electric car, except that now with an e-bike, you almost never have to tap your brake levers. Some of the bikes had the proportional regenerative braking turned up a bit harder, and others had it a bit softer. I definitely preferred it on harder regen, but anyone can use the app to program the regen settings the way they want it. Among the bikes we tested, this small moped style one called the Ringo was probably my favorite. It's small but powerful and it comes with this beautiful leather work. Fred even showed off how the Ringo could carry a passenger, though the tables turned on him a bit when his girlfriend had him riding back seat and holding her purse. <laughs> <laughs> I had my own backseat experience, but this time on a tandem e-bike from Flyer. Seth took the wheel, or handlebars rather, and we gave this slick belt drive e-bike a fun test. Grape was also there showing off their latest e-bikes, including three new models of their ultra premium G6 full suspension electric mountain bikes. These bikes are way too nice for me to even be standing this close to them, but I still enjoyed getting a detailed look at the bikes and even getting to test them out a bit on a short test track. Seth also gave them a nice test, and I'm looking forward to the chance to do a full review at some point here on Electrek. Let me know in the comments section below if I should head back to Croatia and test these e-bikes out on some serious mountain bike trails. Going a different direction, Super 73 was on site with their moped e-bikes and showing off a style that is often imitated but never truly matched. Super 73 has pretty much defined the moped style e-bike that harkens back to the 70s and 80s era of mini bikes, but with a 21st century twist. We even borrowed a couple of these e-bikes to get around Germany with, doing some serious commuting over a two week trip. If there was one e-bike I needed to do just about anything, a Super 73 would be an excellent choice. When it comes to e-bike drive systems, Bosch is one of the biggest names in the game, and they showed off their new smart system at the show. It includes larger batteries, a new display and a remote, and a new smartphone app that allows over-the-air updates and the whole host of possibilities that brings with it for new features that Bosch can push to its e-bikes. We saw the new system installed on some Bulls e-bikes, some of the first to receive the updated drive. While Bulls is a huge company, we also saw some smaller companies present new e-bikes, like this beautiful specimen from a French company called Colleen. It's just gorgeous with its rotary dials, carbon fiber frame and handlebars, gates belt drive, and the sheer attention to detail that you just don't see every day. Nice work, Colleen team. Other small e-bike companies went in a totally different direction, like Nikolai Motors. Instead of an elegant e-bike, they built a monster with crazy power. We're talking up to 35 kilowatts of peak power. It even has two Gates belts on it to handle all of that power and torque. 
Frankly, it's silly that this thing even has pedals, though they do offer a foot peg option, which is probably a better idea. Bird was also on hand to show off their new electric bike designed for consumers. It's obviously a ripoff of Van Moof's design, even if they might consider it more of an inspired by situation. But either way, there's no denying it's got a cool look to it. It may not be as nicely manufactured as Van Moof, but it's certainly more affordable. It's also got Bird written on the side, so make sure you lock it up so someone doesn't think it's a rental and try and make off with it. Another interesting part of the show was a startup section that had all sorts of innovative bikes and other random products and accessories. There was this cool solar charging system from Sunbike that puts solar panels in the wheels to charge an e-bike. It's obviously still a prototype, but I'd love to see them bring it to production with a more polished product. Rainrider also showed off this cool rain shield that pops on and off the bike simply, making it easy to ride in the rain. There are a few different rain canopies out there, sure, but Rainrider's quick disconnect system and the ability for it to fold up is a pretty neat thing in my opinion. Turn also had an interesting accessory for the rain, by the way, but it's for your kids in the back. Turn's GSD and HSD cargo bikes are great for hauling kids, but if you want to keep those kids dry on rainy days, then you'll want to check out their new accessory line. But I digress, let's get back to the startup section. This weird looking snow bike thing is the Erosno E-Trace snow bike. It's not really a snowmobile, even though it looks like it, because it's kind of slow. It's more like a snow transporter, I would say. But I still think it's pretty cool and I'd love to try one myself. Combining e-bike tech and weird bikes is kind of a guilty pleasure of mine. And that leads me right to another electric bike mashup, this time between an e-bike and a hydrofoil board. The Manta 5 hydrofoil electric water bike rides through water and lifts up on its giant hydrofoil, helping it go faster and farther, since it doesn't need to move as much water out of the way. Man, the list of e-bikes I want to test ride is getting mighty long, isn't it? And while we're on the subject of not e-bike e-bikes, check out this one from Hopper Mobility. It's an e-bike car thing that actually uses rear wheel steering to offer a tight turning radius. See what I mean? There's everything here. But not everything cool was actually an e-bike though. I really liked this lock from Uplock that hides away in the seat tube. It means you can't forget your lock and also you won't scratch up your bike frame with a lock dangling around while you're riding. Score! Still in the startup section, Gleam showed off this crazy electric bike, or rather electric trike, that has a tilting rear end complete with independent rear suspension. There's also a really neat quick release system that allows you to swap off whatever cargo accessory you currently have and swap on something else. While we didn't test this one out at the time, Seth and I got the chance to try one a week later at the IAA Mobility Show in Munich. It's not really meant to be a people carrier, at least not like this with the flatbed configuration, but it worked pretty darn well. Here's another interesting one. If you've ever wondered who actually builds the electric scooters and e-bikes used by big sharing companies like Bird, Lime, and others, there's a good chance it's this company, OK. They've been building electric rideables for other companies for over a decade, and now they've started stepping into the spotlight and putting their own name on products, something we're likely to see a lot more of from the company in the future. They've got some nifty tricks too, like this lock that is electrically actuated right into the frame. Here's something else I found to be pretty nifty, though I'm a bit of an e-bike nerd. The e-checker system is basically a dyno for pedal assist e-bikes that can actuate the pedaling so you can measure performance of the bike. You could use it to run standardized tests on all e-bikes and get real world range data to compare, plus so much more. Or at least you could if you could afford it, since it's something like 40,000 euros. But of course, it's really meant for e-bike manufacturers, and they can afford to pay those big bucks, especially with the high prices they're charging all of us for e-bikes. Last but not least, I've got one more nifty thing to show you, which again probably highlights how much of a bike nerd I am. This thin bike packaging actually won an award at Eurobike for innovation, and I can see why. It's a totally cardboard packing system, meaning bikes don't have to ship with tons of foam, which we should all know by now is absolutely awful for the environment. Instead, all of this cardboard is recyclable. Considering how important e-bikes are as part of a sustainable transportation solution, it makes sense that their packaging should be too. Thanks for watching everyone. We hope you enjoyed that tour of Eurobike 2021, where we were checking out all the latest in the electric bicycle industry. 
Make sure you let us know in the comments down below what you thought was the coolest thing that you saw. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and we'll see you here next time for all of our future electric vehicle videos. Promise you